so I've got some slides. Sorry about that, but you know, it's sort of how we do things, isn't it? <laughs> We're kind of naked without our slideshows. And um, so what I kind of want to do, I'm just sharing the screen, is, is maybe to go through this a bit. And, you know, like if you want clarification at any point, just either put it in the chat or just yell. Um, and, um, well, you know, speak. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll just go for it. So I'm Sarah. I'm, I'm a lecturer in uh, bridging education at Unitech, actually, but I've been around for a while with TU stuff. And um, this is about um, my experience of, of the last eight months being on the Tamaki Makaro IRSLG. And of course, you immediately all know exactly what that is, right? Absolutely no nodding. But, <laughs> um, so, you know, you know, as part as Rove, I mean, like Prabhat talked about kind of workforce development councils. So Rove's got, I think, seven objectives or something that they're, or I don't know what they call them, things that they're going to do. And three of those things are to set stuff up. Um, one being to set up Te Pukenga, tick. One being to set up the Workforce Development Councils, yeah. And the other being to set up regional skills leadership groups. And so it's almost like a triangulated system where the, the regional group is supposed to be the voice in um, what the skills training need in the area will be. Um, so the function of these things, that's a map which doesn't really show, you know, the, the 15 regions that the RSLGs have, but um, you can imagine that, that the different situation, in very different situations in different regions, um, because basically New Zealand's a pretty diverse place in a lot of ways. The idea is that, um, according to their website actually, that each group is the quote, eyes and ears on the ground, which I find a sort of strange mixed metaphor, but I know what they mean in, in the sense of the community voice. And, um, you know, I mean, I don't wanna be a Jaffer about this, but um, I think that Tamaki Makara, Auckland has got its own set of issues and, and the most obvious one is simply being bigger in terms of population than I think any other region. And also quite big in size, actually. It does take quite a long time to drive from one end to the other, mainly because of the traffic, but anyway. And um, so what happened was that in, in, uh, in July, this was started and they, they set up the IRA, the, um, interim regional skills leadership groups um, sort of as an early thing. So they set up Te Pukeng and these groups early on. Um, on each of the 15, there are two positions re reserved for union reps. And uh, TU got wind of this, the CTU are quite onto it as well. And um, TU got wind of this and called for some nominations and nominated me for Auckland and Sarah, what is her surname? Proctor, whatever. <laughs> Sarah, oh, anyway, awesome. for Nelson. And so, she, so, and when we compare notes, we've had very quite different experiences, which goes to tell, I think. And so, of course, what was going on was COVID, and so the immediate thing that as the group started meeting the immediate thing to deal with was actually that response and what was going on and how to cope with that. Um, I'll get Jared to send this out to people, this, this great slideshow, if you're fascinated or not. This is a link to MB's information about regional skills leadership groups. And if you haven't done this already, I'd, I'd really urge you to have a look at this and see what it says about the group in your area. And, uh, I don't know how much people know about their local groups. Has anybody had any contact with them or heard anything about them? Yeah, one or two. So, um, where's my slideshow gone? There we go. So, uh, you, can, you can find that quite easily. It's just on the MB website. 
And what do they do? Well, I mean, the main function of these things is to look at, is to feed into producing these uh, local insights reports, which come out about every couple of months. This is the November one for Auckland. And this is sort of what they look like. Um, quite flash in New Zealand government production, as you can see. And um, they have this kind of way of reporting things in this thematic fashion, uh, which I think is quite useful probably for people, although it's very general. And, and the sort of every item on there reflects quite a lot of discussion and back and different people being involved. And uh, I actually think it's, it's been quite interesting the range of voices that, that actually do get to be heard in this, you know. And I think that, so um, the Auckland one started meeting in July and, and has had both live and um, online meetings every two or three weeks ever since. It's now down to monthly, oops. And um, the co-chairs, uh, Robert Reed, who some of you might know from the union movement from First Union, he who is an absolute, um, he's really quite passionate about this, this whole thing, about this being the opportunity, like we lost this, we as union people and working people, we lost this in the 90s, right? Up to then, we had some say in each region about what sort of skills training was planned for the area. Not in the same way as this, but we had a say. And we lost that. And this is our chance in some ways to have that voice again, which I think is something that is really important. The other co-chair is Awarangi Tamahere, who is um, a, a actually very impressive person who runs a large, um, urban iwi based organization called the Waiparera Trust in West Auckland and they do a lot of um, health and education and and uh, development work in their in community and um, do all sorts of stuff actually and one of the things that's been very striking is a number of such organizations what they did in in the COVID thing is just sort of like you know gobsmacking amazing so I've heard a lot about that. And um, so the members of the, of the um, group are quite a range of people. So, so for me, it's like quite weird to be you know, a little tutor from nowhere, sitting next to um, the person who runs all of the HR for the whole of McDonald's in New Zealand. And then the next person runs a Pacifica a Pacific Business Association and so on. And there's kind of, you know, there are, there are 12 members of, of the committee. Plus there are always quite a few MB people there who provide lots and lots of information. So if you're involved in this, you get hit, your inbox basically gets hit with a whole load of stuff and statistics and information that you try have to try and make sense of. And, um, that's a bit of a, a learning curve thing, but interesting. And what it is, it's, it's a much more general thing. Like most of us are, start, are sort of like, our head is pretty much in our own discipline. And this is not like that. This is much broader. So um, yeah, and you know, this group has, deci has decided really through the leadership of the coaches actually, and as a group has decided that, you know, the sort of long-term vision or aspiration for Tamaki Makaro is really important and needs to be articulated and every voice needs to be heard in forming that. So, I mean, I think that's okay. And so how it's been kind of operating has been a decision made early on that, well, there's an awful lot of information out there. How on earth do we make sense of this? How do we cope with... Um, thinking about all the different training needs and people that, that need training and what have you in, in a big city. So that we decided that we would have deep dives, as they call it, which is a popular businessy term, isn't it? But anyway, deep dives into um, a couple of areas, construction being a very 
like key industry in Auckland, obviously, and health being another. And so that means a, a real wealth of people from different areas in those industries uh, coming and talking to the group and giving their perspective and being able to discuss with them, you know, what sort of things are going on. And um, as a result of that sort of conversation happening, sometime what, what I kind of really notice about this is that awful lot of people who, who are involved in the same sort of thing and who never talk to each other or who don't talk to each, all of the people that maybe they should be talking to. And so, for example, out of this has come a, a construction industry forum that in, the, in Auckland that's decided to sort of just get together and have a series of meetings, which they're now doing to look at the industry. And so ITO people, um, Polytech people, and a whole bunch of other people, are, uh, business people are involved in this. And uh, I mean, I think I sort of get the impression that this is quite an unusual thing to happen. So it's, it's very encouraging, really. Um, the uh, MB people also provide a lot of advice and information. And one thing, of course, as well is, is being aware of the need to sort of move around in your region and to maybe not just hold your meetings in one area. And so we've been to different parts of Auckland. So um, there are a lot of challenges involved in being in these groups. You know, I mean, when I say it's been eight months, a lot of it's been eight months of kind of getting forming as a group because, uh, you know, you know how groups like your class take a while to gel. And that's certainly true of this. And so it's quite disparate people working together. I mean, it's a, it's a big, diverse place, Tamaki Mikado. There's a lot of different um, voices to be heard. The MB staff, you know, they've got to get their heads around their new roles and what they're supposed to do. Uh, people in the group, we've got to understand what we're supposed to do. Um, and so all of that takes time. And uh, there's a lot of in information to interpret as well. And, and a, a lot of people are very busy who tend to get involved with these sort of things, you know, and um, so they prioritise their time quite carefully. And COVID has meant, you know, all those sort of problems in getting together. And, um, yeah, so, but I would say it's, it's, I've found this just a massively interesting thing. I've learned screeds of stuff a lot of stuff I mean I thought I knew Auckland reasonably well but as it turns out there's a lot I didn't know which is great to learn stuff you know and um, I really think that it's quite important for us and TU to be involved in this um, CTU is having a meeting next week about this in Auckland um, but with national representation because the the uh, nomination process for the um, two union members and, and for all the other members. So the nomination process for committee members will be starting quite soon. And I think that it's, it would be really good to get more connection between TU branches and their local um, IR, their local, well, they won't be I anymore, there are SLG groups, including representation. I think we've got we bring to it an educator voice and we bring in a, a union voice as well. So I think we're a union that really, um, this is very so key to us, you know. We connect, through doing this, we can connect with the wider union movement, which is something that we don't always get all that much chance to do. And, you know, it's this one-time influencer chance and rove, isn't it? And the other thing is that I think this is pretty good professional development for anybody who's involved in it. It should be recognised as such in their um, performance, you know. So um, anyway, that, that's kind of what I have to say about the um, IRSLGs. I hope it makes some sort of sense. And uh, please ask any questions you have or comments.